Hello everybody! In today's video, we're going to play Taiko no Tatsujin Drum and Fun, which is Taiko no Tatsujin for the Switch. First things first, let me just explain what Taiko no Tatsujin is. Taiko no Tatsujin is a Japanese arcade game where you hit dons and cars to the beat. It is a drumming game. It is an arcade game, although they have released the game on multiple consoles such as PS4 and the Switch, which I'll be playing today, and also other platforms like the App Store, the DS. Taiko no Tatsujin is a very friendly game for beginners and straight up children actually. There are children out there who play this game and are really scary at it. Because the game is simple, it's easy to get into, and this one makes a good rhythm game. It is very straightforward. So today we'll be playing Taekwondo Tatsujin for the Switch, and I'll talk about how the game works, and a lot of other trivia about the game, such as the arcade cabinets and how they work. I know that most places don't have the arcade cabinet, but if you're really lucky enough to see one, you will understand what I'm talking about in this video, and plus, sometimes it's just good to know extra information about game. I'll be playing it with the Hori Taiko drum, we call it these Tatakons. I made a video about the different controllers for Taiko, which is this one versus the knockoff drum. Yeah, there's a cheaper knockoff version of this. And versus the gigantic Taiko Force, which is my favorite arcade controller I own. Off topic, but out of all the Reno games I've ever tried and played, Taiko is actually my favorite one. <laughs> I don't think many people know that actually. You'd think that the games I'm best at, like Sun Voltex or Osu, is my favorite, but it's actually Taiko, even though I'm not very good at it. <laughs> if you're really easy to watch through the entire long Taiko video that I made of the drums, TLDR. Get this one, it's much better. It also works on PC by the way. I mean, all the drums that I showed works on PC. They just make sense as a gamepad controller. So you can use it on your PC if you want to play TGA Player 3, which is the simulator for Taiko no Tatsujin or Osu Taiko. Although I wouldn't really recommend it because Osu Taiko is... It has mechanics that's not great for drum play. Taiko no Tatsujin is way more fun with a drum, so I really highly recommend you please try the drum because on the controller, it's still fun, but the fun kind of wears off, it feels like a, it feels like it exists, at least in my opinion. But the drum just makes it way better. I don't know, I don't know how to describe it. I remember getting a lot of angry comments on my drum video. People were mad that I called rolls, rolls instead of buzz rolls, like snare drumming buzz rolls. You know, this is a game, right? <laughs> you can't really compare it to snare drumming. And not to mention, the game that this is based on is on the Taiko drums, which is a Japanese drum. It's also very different from snare drumming, which is Western kind of drumming. They are two literally different drums. People are mad at me of how I hold the drumsticks because I wasn't supposed to let out these fingers while holding the sticks. I, the way I hold it like this is so that the stick can make more than two bounces on the drum. It's really different from buzz rolling. People are angry that I use the term rolling for these buzz rolls. Rolling is a Taiko no Tatsujin coin term by the Japanese community and it's very different from snare drumming. <laughs> It's a game. And of course other people were also pointing out why play this game when you can play a real drum. And basically a lot of drum elitists were kinda looking down on me because I wasn't playing a drum game like a real drum. You know they're two completely different things, right? <laughs> it's just a really heavy case of I know a lot about this one subject, therefore I know a lot about another subject that seems similar. Even though the thing is that if you did know a lot about Taekwondo Tassujin as a game and were uh, and knew the meta and everything, you'd understand that they are actually not very comparable. <laughs> Although there are actual Taiko players out there who do use uh, actual drumming techniques on the drums, but it is a thing that it can be quite tiring to use buzz rolling or like the proper way of drumming on the Taekwondo Tatsujin drums than just for the multiple hits. Okay, I'm going off tangent about too much about that video, but let's, get, let's go and play Taekwondo Tatsujin. Alright, so this is my sister's Switch. I'll be playing on the TV today because I imagine most people will be playing on the TV if they had the drum. So yeah, hopefully you can see the screen pretty well. And uh, yeah, I have a big TV. I'm deciding to use the TV instead of my computer because there is one thing about Taekwondo Tatsujin that you guys need to know. This video is definitely going to get a copyright claim because there's a lot of copyrighted songs on Taiko. But eh, it's okay, I love the game. It's alright if I don't make money. <laughs> the thing about TVs is that they have a lot of output latency, it's laggy, that's why there's game mode, but even on game mode on TVs, it doesn't help. That's what I noticed. So I'll be teaching you guys how to set your offset first, because it's really important to set your offset right, if not it, whatever you're playing doesn't match what's happening on the screen, which is, it kind of screws the experience. But if you're playing on the Switch itself, the offset and everything's perfect. Okay, so I, I recommend you go to simple collaboration, and you go TV mode, then set offset. So I'm gonna use the drum controller and TV speakers. They have these two modes, you just choose either, but I think I usually use the first one, the recommended one. 
looks like this is what they determined as my offset and that's pretty much it. The offset works pretty well. Although I noticed that you can try testing it in the manual TV mode and play test. And so you can test if the offset is working right. The problem with this game is that you can't turn the hit sounds off in the offset. The problem with having a very high offset is that the hit sounds start to not match the sounds your drum makes. Okay, this looks like it works. Works pretty well. And that's it for offset collaboration. Also, if your offset is very high like mine, I highly recommend you turn off the drum hit sounds, which is what I'm going to do and show you guys later. Also, the problem with the taiko drum, honestly, the tatakon, is that it's very loud. I mean, this is not loud. The car zone is loud. This is louder than my big drum because it's made of plastic. But the good thing about the Hori drum, the official one at least, is that you can mod it. I had a thread on my Twitter on how to mod the drum with wood if you wanted to, compared to the usual method which uses a cork ball. My tutor is gone, so it's gone, but I still have it archived somewhere, I'll link it in the description. So when you, as you play the game, you unlock different characters to use, and they have an effect on your gameplay, and it's written on the screen. Although I usually don't use any of them, because they usually boost your score in some kind of way, and I feel like it's cheating. <laughs> Especially with making the timing windows easier, or making it easier to pass songs, and things like that. So I usually keep it to just using Dawn or Katsu. Also fun fact, Dawn Chan's voice is very high-pitched and loud, that in the arcade itself, if the game volume setting is set, to a normal volume, where you can hear the game properly. Don Chan's voice is way louder than the music and it echoes throughout the arcade. It ended up causing uh, Taiko players versus every other Rune game players in my own arcade, where everyone was complaining that the Taiko machine was too loud because of Don Chan's voice. Yeah. Okay, I'll play it hard for you guys then. So basically this game is quite simple. The middle of the drum is the red notes, the outside of the drums is the blue notes. Everything else is just spamming the red parts of your drum, which is the drum rolls and everything else. Oh wait, I forgot. I need to explain how to change your sound settings turn off the hit sounds. When you select a song, you can click for options and at the side here, you can change the instrument sound. You can change it to some really weird stuff like drum, drum kit, tambourine, conga, 8-bit drum, hand drum. You have a cannon sound effect. Why? And cats and dogs. Okay, I think I'll, I'll turn it off. They have a motorcycle sound effect. Why? Okay, silent. The game's fun. The good thing about Taiko is that they have the normal easy difficulties and then the really hard ones. So for the big notes, what you do is that you use both the sticks to hit down and for the big blue notes, both sticks on the top. The thing is that even on the big notes, you can still use one side to hit them, like this. But it gives you less score. These are balloons, you just blow them. Yeah, so that's how the game is. It's a fun game. In Taiko, most players usually care a lot about your miscount, which is the bad count. Usually in games, you have ranking letters like B, C, B, and A, and then S. But on Taiko, you don't. You either just normal clear or full combo the song. They don't have anything if you perfect the song either, which is weird. So most Taiko players have their own judging system by like, first they try to clear the song, and then they try to get a rainbow clear, which is filling up the entire meter, and then they try to go for full combo, and then a perfect. Although the newer versions of of the Taiko cabinets they have in Japan that was released like a while ago, uh, they did add their own ranking medals, which is a weird thing to get used to, but it exists now. And they changed the scoring system on the new Taiko cabinets. The thing is about Taiko is that it's a combo game actually, <laughs> unlike other games, but they changed it in the, the newest version. So you must be wondering what this thing called diverge notes are on the screen. I don't know if you can see it, but some levels, especially the Oni, which is extreme, they have this thing called diverge notes. And diverge notes is actually different levels levels of difficulty in the same song. Depending on how well you play, they change the difficulty of the song. So right now, it's normal mode. And then now it's professional. You can tell by the, the blue background. Okay, so yeah, some songs have a very interesting way of how they create diverge notes, which is different levels of the song. So if you do terribly enough in a song, you won't see any colour on the lane, which is the grey background. You would just be normal mode, which is just green colour. And then the step above that is professional mode, which is blue. And then above that is master, which is purple. But for Hyaka Roran, the way it works is very interesting because it starts with a drum roll. And depending on how many hits you have on a drum roll, determines your mode. I'll demonstrate how to get different modes. Just not hit once, which got me in professional. If I miss it completely, I stay in normal mode and the chart is different, which is easier. Not all diverged note songs work this way. 
Other songs like Night of Nights is based purely off certain requirements in the song itself of how well we're playing. But for things like Hyakaro Run, it's based on the drum roll in the front, which is the number of times you hit. Hitting no times is normal, hitting once is professional, hitting twice or more is master. Yeah, so that's basically it. And also, another fun fact. So you see on big notes, you have to hit both sides of the drum at once. The thing about that is that it gives more score. But in the arcade machine, there is no difference between the big notes and the small notes except for the hit sound it plays. It doesn't give you more score in the arcade if you hit both sides. You can just hit one side. Which is why a lot of arcade players, you notice, they only play the game as if it's all small notes. Which is uh, interesting. And I prefer the way the arcade plays because I think it's just, just straight up easier. This game is fun. I mean, you can play on easier levels and still find it extremely fun. And that's how I got into Taiko. I first started the game playing normal and hard modes only, and then I slowly worked my way up to extremes, although I'm not very good at extreme. I'm still in 9 star hell. Alright, there's another thing you might be wondering. In Taiko, you might be wondering why in different songs they have different amount of stars in the difficulty. You can see here there's different stars. So you might be thinking, okay, so why is there 3 star for normal and easy? Are they the same difficulty? No, it's not. How Taiko works is quite interesting with their star rating system. Unlike most games where more stars equals more difficult, this game is where each star rating is contained in its own difficulty level. So a 5 star easy is still easier than a 1 star normal. How I imagine it will work is that if you have a 10 star easy and then if it gets harder than 10 star easy where it will be 11 star easy, that would be 1 star normal. So it carries over. So you have certain songs that look kind of funny. Yeah, like this is kind of weird that the hard has more stars than extreme, but extreme is still actually harder than hard, so that's something to note. Hope that clears it up, because when I first tried playing Taiko, I found this star rating system really weird at first, and I didn't realise that was actually how it works. Another nice thing about the Taiko Switch version is that it has a party game mode, like Mario Kart and those other games, so you can you get, get two games in one go, except that I don't have friends around me right now. <laughs> <laughs> when you overqualify for a job. By the way, if you find the drum too loud, you can actually make it quieter by a little bit, by getting a cloth and putting it over the drum. Muffle the sound a bit. But I noticed that even when you do that, the car sounds on the drum, which is the car sides, they're still incredibly loud. You can hear the plastic sounds, but the dons get quieter. Although putting a cloth over your drum would affect a bit of how sensitive the drum is, but if you model the drum like me, uh, it should be crazy sensitive, honestly. I think I prefer it without the cloth. <laughs> but it's much quieter, on the dawn sides at least. You guys might be wondering, how can people stand this game? It's a horizontal scroller. Most screens suffer from screen tear, where like uh, the screen doesn't show properly and stuff like that. And that's, yeah, it's completely fair. And it's the thing that makes Taiko quite unaccessible for many people. Like, including also Taiko for people on their PC and laptops. They won't have the issues with the output delay of their screens, but they will face screen tear issues. And generally, Taiko on 60Hz is just not great. Unless you have one of those screens that are very smooth. I've seen 60Hz screens that can run Taiko very well, including that tiny portable touchscreen monitor that really ran and Taiko very well for a side scroller on 60Hz. You must be wondering about the arcade cabinets as well. The arcade cabinets, they are not high refresh rates, they are only 75Hz, but they are incredibly smooth. They must have some sort of smoothing uh, filter in the arcade cabinets itself, which is what makes it not look choppy. It does look smooth in the arcade. Although the newer versions of the arcade cabinets, which is the latest version with the new medals and everything, they changed the cabinet to 120Hz, which is so good. But Singapore doesn't have the cabinet and it, it hurts me. <laughs> and by the way, if you do see the cabinet outside, please do not beat the drum really hard. You're better off buying your own drum and like destroying it. Please don't like hit the arcade drum too hard. The thing about arcade drum is that they're so sensitive they can count the bounces when you bounce the stick on the drum. That's how sensitive it is. You don't need to hit that hard. Except the thing is that a lot of people don't know that and assume that you have to hit hard because one, it's a drum and two, the bachi, which is the drumsticks that come along with the arcade cabinet on default, we call them house bachi. They're very heavy, so people end up using it to strike really hard. And honestly, I'm gonna admit I've been one of those people, those annoying young kids. Because I thought the machine wasn't working properly and I was frustrated myself, so I just hit the drum really hard on a fucking normal difficulty. 
disappointed in myself, but I was a young person I didn't know. So now you know, don't hit the drum very hard. <laughs> you can get your own bachi, which is the ones I showed in my previous videos, to play taiko. It's much better because the drumsticks is much lighter as well when you get your own bachi. Makes it faster to move since the drumsticks are lighter. I noticed a lot of kids are kind of rude when people are playing taiko. I've seen instances of someone playing on the taiko machine and then like a seven-year-old kid will run up to the other drum, pick up the bachi and start hitting the drum while someone else is playing. It's not even their kid. It's just some random kid that ran up to the machine and is being a nuisance. I don't know what the parents are doing. If you ever see kids doing that, please like take the bachi away from them. You can actually untie the house bachi from the arcade cabinet yourself if you look closely. And that's what we do when kids run up to the machine and try to break the machine. We untie the house bachi and then keep it in a high place that kids cannot reach. So now you know, now you know. So the thing about Taiko in Switch is that it doesn't start out with many songs, but it unlock more songs as you go along. They also have this thing called Inner Oni. In here, it's just a purple difficulty. When you keep hitting the side, it changes purple. It's a harder difficulty, but we call it Inner Oni. Extreme is, we call it Oni, but in the English localization, we call it Extreme. It's harder, uh, Inner Onis. My favorite section in Taiko in general is the vocal music and the Namco original stuff. The hardest song they have on the plain uh, Taiko notation, I believe, is So You Run. I think that it might be a harder one, I'm not sure. So You Run is freaking hard. I, I have never cleared this, it's actually cleared it. <laughs> and yes, all the songs in the Switch are the same as the ones in the arcade cabinet. It's cool. Uh, you can get more DLCs. Uh, I haven't gotten any DLC myself. I need to make a Japanese Nintendo account if I want to buy DLCs because this is the Japanese version of Taiko. I actually got a Japan region <laughs> game. Uh, Alright, so I've changed screens to this big giant monitor I have. It's a 32 inch monitor, 60 hertz. Actually, it's 75 hertz, but I think the Switch only outputs at 60 FPS. Also, the audio on this monitor is not very loud, unfortunately. This used to be my sound voltage monitor. I don't use it anymore though. Oh, that's really good. Is it 000? zero zero? Okay, this means that I can turn on the drum hit sounds. Alright, because this camera is now close to the screen, I can show you guys how the party mode looks like in a bit. You might be wondering, hey, should I get Taiko Natasha for Switch? And my answer is, why not? Except if you own a PS4. If you own a PS4 and still actively use it, I highly recommend the PS4 version over the Switch version. Because the PS4 version has more songs and more features. Also, another thing about using a drum is that you tend to be less accurate actually, due to how the drum works. You are more accurate if you use like button controls. Motion controls, controls are probably terrible. <laughs> That's why I didn't use a drum on my beginner Taiko tournament video because that is a tournament where everyone needs to get an SS, like 100% perfect. If I use a drum, my accuracy will be like 80%. <laughs> it's very hard to get good accuracy on a drum. What's a tough one now I can play? Okay, let's play this. Okay. <laughs> oh, last part is so hard. Okay, this is, this is an okay miscount. <laughs> the accuracy is okay. Alright, that's a good score. I managed to clear it on the switch. 
Hey, let's move on to the party modes. Uh, one player because I don't have friends over right now. The party games is really what sells the Switch version for me at least because I can play with friends too, uh, other than just two player mode. Yes, you can connect two drums to play Taekwondo like Tachijin with your friend, multiplayer, local co-op. There's also online matching if you prefer. So these are the different stuff they have in their party games. They're all rhythm based actually. Ninja training. Okay, let's try ninja training. Okay. So there are different ways of playing. You can play with a drum too, but I want to play with uh, the sticks because it's easier. So they kind of explain how the game works each time you start the game, so that's pretty good. Oh, based off uh, rhythm. The timing windows on these are pretty lenient, I think. But it can get pretty tough. Oh, I forgot how to hit those. Oh, I missed that. <laughs> this is one of the game modes. They're all one button games. You can play with your friends. Up to four players, which is pretty cool. <laughs> the the bot one, whoops. <laughs> okay, good to know. Oh, flag rating is another cool one. This is for the left side, alright. Oh, this is tough. <laughs> Screw this. Dang, okay. This is terrible. <laughs> oh, I'm horrible at this. I didn't even clear. Clear score is 85. Bruh. <laughs> okay, good to know. But yeah, that's the party games. It's kind of an extra gimmick, to be honest. It looks like for rhythm games in general, if you want to go for a console for specifically rhythm games, PS4 is the best. It won't have Cyclist Alpha, however, or Demo, but it seems that Taiko no Tatsujin for PS4 is better, and so is Project Diva PS4. Maybe it's because of a stronger console. I never can get the co the controls right for some reason, I don't know. I should play Taiko no Tatsujin for DS. I have Taiko no Tatsujin for the DS, it's fun too. I like it. <laughs> Taiko no Tatsujin for mobile is not very good though. It's stuck on 60 frames. If you want to play Taiko no Tatsujin for your phone, you're much better off. Downloading a simulator, because at least it's not kept at 60 frames per second if you have a high refresh rate phone. Playing with buttons is still pretty possible on uh, Taekwon Tatsujin. I know some crazy people out there with great at button skills. I, I haven't seen who was the hardest thing someone cleared with motion controls. I want to know because there's probably someone crazy enough out there to play with motion controls well. How do I do this? Drumstick grip. Okay, like this. terrible but it's <laughs> quite tiring if you were to try doing something really crazy on this. There seems to be some false triggers. Okay, let's see if I can play an insane with this. Huh? I have to pretend there's like a huge drum in front of me I think. Ah, you couldn't hit that pattern. Yeah, the clockwise movement for Don Kaka Don is... It won't be able to detect that, <laughs> at least not for me. Oh, we hit that! Yep, not even a clear. <laughs> oh my. 44 misses, that's, that's not very good. Well, a fail is not even good for this. <laughs> oh well. 
And yeah, that's it for Taiko no Tatsujin. It's a really fun game for the Switch. You should play Taiko. Play Taiko. Play Taiko. It's the best rhythm game. At least to me. It's my favorite one. It's the best. It's so good. It's so fun. I wish more people played it. But I'm glad that this game is on the Switch and other consoles that other people can experience the game too, you know? If not, if it was only arcade cabinets, so many people wouldn't be able to play the game. If I'm not wrong, Taiko no Tatsujin is also Pinify approved. He said he liked it when he was talking about his favorite Switch game. If he's playing it and I'm playing it, you should play it too. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If there's any other questions you have about Taiko, feel free to ask me in the comments. One common question would be, how do you know where to hit on the drum or which buttons to press? How do you see the patterns? How do you get used to it? A lot of it is playing slower songs and slowly moving your hands in an alternating fashion and learn to full alternate your hand movements first and then you will know how to move your hands when faster notes come in, like the triples and stuff like that. I'm still no expert though, which I was. I'll be playing this game a lot more then. Thanks for watching.